everyone, it is Rachel, Education Specialist at the Topeka Zoo and Conservation Center, and today we want to welcome you to our first morning education program. Now how these are going to work is every day we do these programs at 10 o'clock, we are going to meet a differing grade level curriculum standard. So we're going to start with kindergarten today. On Monday we will do first grade, Wednesday of next week we will do second grade, Friday of next week we will do third grade, and so on and so forth. So if you're joining us for the first time today, we're going to kind of work our way up into differing grade levels. So today, for our first education program, we are going to focus on kindergarten standards relating to food and water. So today we're going to talk about how all living organisms on earth, from plants to animals, including humans, need food and water to be able to survive. Now how they eat and what that looks like is differing for every single living organism. Things like plants, like this one here, they actually need light, sunlight, to be able to grow big and tall. Plants aren't consuming three meals a day like humans are. They have to get all of their energy and their food from the sunlight. Animals, on the other hand, actually have to eat their food. And that looks different based on where they are found in the world and how they are designed. Whether it's a big giraffe over in Africa eating lots of trees and branches or a snake slithering here in Kansas swallowing a mouse whole. You can usually tell what an animal eats based on their teeth. So what I want to do real quick is I want to go over some differing animal skulls and talk about how the teeth help indicate what an animal eats. And in a second, we're going to meet a live animal as well. So what I have here to start, this is a real molar from an elephant. This is an animal that lives over in the savanna, the grasslands in Africa on the other side of the earth. Now elephants are big animals and they love eating things like grasses and bushes, twigs and even tree bark. So this is one of their molars. Now if you guys notice, if you look at the molar here, you can see that it has lots of small flat ridges. This portion right here is actually the root of the tooth that goes up into their mouth. Now elephants have these dull flat teeth because this allows them to grind up all of those plants that they are eating over in Africa. Think about when you eat a salad. Are you using your sharp teeth in the front or are you using your back molars back here to grind up all of those plants? We generally use our back teeth that are also shaped similar to this. They are sh um, short and they are flat and dull, just like that. So animals that eat plants generally have flat teeth. Let's look at another example. What I have here, this is the skull of a white-tailed deer, what we have here in Kansas. If you look at the teeth, it looks similar to an elephant, only they are smaller, and there's more of them in the deer's mouth. But their teeth look very similar to our molars. They are broad and flat, and this allows them to eat the grasses and the twigs, the bushes and the berries, all the wonderful plants we have here in Kansas. So if you look at the teeth of an animal who eats plants, oftentimes, like the elephant and the deer, they will be broad and flat so they can crunch up all of those wonderful veggies. Now, let's move on to some animals who eat meat. What I have here is the skull of a hyena, which is another animal that lives over in Africa with our elephant. You will notice that like our elephant, they do have some molars in the back, but they have these big, sharp, pointy teeth in the front. These big two teeth right here are called canines, and they use those to bite into their prey. They might be eating a gazelle or some food that another animal has caught. Hyenas love to steal food from other types of animals who eat meat. So these big sharp teeth right here are specially designed to rip off chunks of the prey that they are eating. Let's look at another example of an animal who eats meat. 
This is a leopard also living over in Africa and boy are those canines big. If you look, the leopard actually has bigger canines compared to the head size than even the hyena did. They have two hanging down from the bottom and two coming up from the top. And they are also going to be hunting and killing other small animals. And so those big sharp teeth allow them to eat meat. Now, as humans, we eat both meat and plants, at least most of us do. And so we need a combination of the dull, flat teeth, like the plant eaters, and the sharp, pointy teeth, like the meat eaters. So if you look here, this is the skull of a river otter, and their teeth are kind of similar to what we have in our mouth. They have the back molars or the back flat teeth that allow them to chew up differing types of plants, but they also have these smaller canines that allow them to eat meat like fish in the water. So these teeth allow them to eat both plants and meat. The same is true for humans. We have some canines on the front of our teeth, but we also have the flat ones in the back. And our canines are not nearly as big as the leopard or the hyena. Now, not every animal in the world actually has teeth inside of their mouth. Some animals, like birds, have beaks. And even in these animals, just by looking at the way their beaks are formed, we can get an idea of what they love to eat. So what I have here, this is the skull of a turkey. And if you can see, you see that its beak is broad and flat. Turkeys, like the ones we have here in Kansas, they love eating grains and grasses, berries. And every once in a while, they will eat some bugs, but they're not going to be actively hunting other animals like our big meat eaters. So this beak is designed for mostly eating vegetables and types of differing plants. Now let's look at a differing bird beak, one that eats meat. This here is the skull of a great horned owl, one of the biggest owls we have in Kansas. You will notice that its beak is curved downward. It is sharp and it is pointy. That is because owls are what we call birds of prey. Like a hawk or an eagle, they hunt and kill other animals. Great horned owls would eat a squirrel, a rabbit, a snake. And so that downward curved beak is what allows them to bite off parts of their prey. Since birds don't have hands or a fork and a knife, they have to rely on this sharp pointy beak as a way for them to eat their prey. Now, it's not just birds that have beaks. Did you know that turtles and tortoises also have beaks? They don't have teeth inside their mouth like we do. And just like all of the other examples we have looked at, the same can be true for turtle and tortoise beaks. So what I have here, this is the skull of an Aldabra tortoise. This is the second largest tortoise in the world. And if you notice right here, this is its beak. The beak is broad and flat because this tortoise loves eating veggies. And this broad, flat beak allows them to chew, chew, chew their food to grow big and strong. Now, on the other hand, this is the skull of a snapping turtle. And if you look at its beak, it looks kind of similar to the great horned owl beak. It's pointy and sharp and kind of comes to a point in the front. Snapping turtles love eating other animals. They like eating fish and snakes in the water and things like that. And so this pointy beak allows them to quickly capture their prey and eat it. Now, our animal friend for today is a type of tortoise who lives over in Africa who eats both plants and meat. So let me grab Hinji, our hingeback tortoise. She lives in the tortoise pit behind me in our Gary Clark education room. All righty. So this here is Hinji. Now she had just buried herself in some dirt, so she is a little bit dirty. But if you look, just like our other tortoises and turtles that we've looked at, she has a beak on her face. Now her beak is not as sharp as the snapping turtle, 
And it's not as dull as the Aldopper tortoise because she needs a little bit of a sharp beak to be able to eat other animals like bugs in Africa where she lives, but she also loves eating fruits and veggies. She actually just got her food today and she has lots of lettuce and carrots and bugs in her diet that she is down there eating in the tortoise pit. So all over the world, you can find differing animals who have differing teeth structure based on what they eat. So let's see what you guys have learned. We are actually going to do a little bit of a quiz. I have four skulls here, and I want you guys to guess at home what you think each of these animals eats based on their teeth. So I'm gonna set Hinji back down. Let's look at this first one. So this is an animal, and if you look at its teeth, it looks very similar to our deer and our elephant. They've got those broad, flat teeth in the back, and then they've got these um, broader, bigger teeth in the front. But none of those teeth are really very sharp. If you guessed that this is a plant eater, you are right. This is the skull of a llama, and they are going to be eating plants like our elephant and our deer. Let's look at another one. So this is a type of turtle. And if you look at the front of its beak here, it is sharp and pointy. What do you guys think this turtle eats? Do you think it eats plants or do you think it eats meat? If you guessed meat, you are right. This is the skull of an alligator snapping turtle. This is just the top portion. And this sharp beak here is what allows them to catch and kill their prey. This is a really big turtle that we have here in the United States. Now let's look at another example. This is a local example of an animal you might see. So just like humans, it's got broad, flat teeth in the back but it's also got kind of big canines on the front. Does anybody guess? Does this eat plants, meat, or both? The answer is both. This is a Virginia opossum, just like ones you might see around Kansas at nighttime. And their teeth are adapted to be able to eat plants and meat. They love eating dead things, but if they can't find a dead animal, they'll also eat a variety of plants as well. Okay, last one. So this is also another local example. This is an animal that you probably haven't seen in the wild, although they do live in Kansas. If you look at its teeth, it's got a little bit of flat teeth at the back, but mostly it's got really big canines in the front. This is a bobcat skull, and they love eating meat, just like all types of cats. These are meat eaters. Now friends, all living plants and animals, they don't just need food. All plants and animals also need water to survive. Now plants, they get their water through their roots. So I have a little succulent here, and this type of plant has roots all the way down into the base of this pot. And the water, when it rains, collects down in the roots, and that is how it goes up through the plants. So plants aren't gonna be drinking like animals, right? Animals, they have to find a water source, whether that be a pond, a river, a lake, a stream, the rain, they need to go and to be able to drink their food, or drink their water. Now, some animals, like camels, are specially designed to be able to drink a lot of water at once they can drink up to 30 gallons in one sitting and go for up to a week without drinking anymore, which is pretty impressive. Now camels have these big humps on their back. These humps are not where they store water. That is a myth. They actually store fatty tissue in those humps. Water is stored throughout their blood cells, which are oval shaped to allow them to um, expand and go up and down a little bit easier so they can have more water in their body. So friends, what I want you to do now is I want you with a family member at some point today or this weekend when it is nice outside to go out and explore. What animals do you see on the ground, in the trees, in the sky? 
what do you notice about their teeth or their beaks or their body parts that allow them to find food and water? Do you see similarities between different animals? Do you see differences between different animals? Do all plants need the sunlight or can some of them um, survive with a lot of shade? As you are out exploring the nature around you, I want you to also collect leaves that have fallen or any other plant material that you find. Because one thing that I love doing with nature is making art out of it. So what I did yesterday was I collected a bunch of leaves off the ground and I made an animal. Can anybody guess what kind of animal this is? So I've showed it to a few of my coworkers and they immediately guessed turkey, but if it had a lot of colors on it, I was also going for peacock. So what I want you all to do is collect some leaves and other plant materials from the ground that's already fallen. Please don't pull off any living animal or living plants and make an animal and share a picture of that animal in the comments so we can see what all you have created. And as you guys explore the nature around you, pay attention to the plants and the animals and the food and water that they need to survive. So that is the end of our lesson today. If we have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Let's see, so far enough. Okay, perfect. Uh, that means we answer all sorts of stuff then. Yeah, when they don't have any questions, that means you either answer them all or they're so freaking confused they don't know what to ask. <laughs> I said, we got all, everyone wants to let you know that it was a great lesson. Thank you, Rachel. You are very welcome. And we hope to see you guys on Monday. Monday, we are going to be covering first grade curriculum. And we are going to be talking about the parts that animals need to survive. And we have another animal friend on Monday. Ooh, we have a question. We have a question. Okay. Uh, what about giraffes and water? Do they store it? Up? They, they don't store it like a camel does. Um, they do actually have to bend over to drink and they're vulnerable. That means they can get attacked when that happens. So giraffes do have to still, they kind of splay their legs to drink, um, but they don't store it as long as a camel does. Great question. Okay. Alrighty, well, if you guys don't have any more questions, we appreciate you coming and learning with us today. We look forward to Monday. I am really excited about the animal we're gonna meet at 10 a.m. on Monday. She is one of my favorite ones, and she has some really interesting behaviors that allow her to survive as well. Ooh, another question. Same time every day? Same time. Um, next week, it's just gonna be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just to kind of get us going. And then the week after that, it'll be every day, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. So next week, 10 a.m. Monday, be here to learn all about adaptations and meet one of my favorite education mammals.